Hey guys. Well, as you see, I'm working on Rebecca's house and we're doing some stairs. And I thought the process of doing the stairs is, is so intricate. So there's so much to it that you would never imagine what it takes to even just put in a stair tread. So I thought after doing a few of these, as you can see, these here are done. Like they're, they, they're ready to be sanded. But the process from uh, just to get it to this point is so involved, I thought, it's, it's kind of neat, it's involved, it's fun. Uh, there's a lot to it, and I thought you'd want to see it. So this is just, uh, I'm going to do a tread, I'm going to take you through the whole process of doing one tread to get it to this point, and you see uh, what I've got to do. So here we go. Okay, so here we go, and the first thing you need to do is grab your piece of wood, check it out for defects, and choose which is the top and which is the bottom. The top has usually been more finished sanded, than the bottom of the tread. Put the bottom side up, and even though it's been sanded, you'll need to sand it again. I start with 80 grit sandpaper, and I love this uh, hook and loop system where you can hook your vacuum cleaner to it and keep the dust down. So I'm gonna sand these edges. And uh, the bottom side of the tread, I'm just gonna do around the, the outside edge because the rest gets, um, you never see. And I'm really paying attention to that outside uh, corner. It's a bullnose um, profile on the tread, but there's sort of a sharp edge to it where the tangents of those uh, meet, and I, it just doesn't look very good, so I like to sand it off. And I'll do that with the 120 grit sandpaper. Then, of course, as you see, I flipped it over. Now I'm going to sand this side and sand the whole surface. Then I'm going to switch out my sandpaper to 120 grit sandpaper and do it all again. Even though uh, I'm going to be drilling holes and this all somewhat have to be done again, you won't have to do up, to, up against the edges and you won't have to do the profile in the front and it saves a whole lot of time and uh, in your knees and your back if you do this on the workbench. And then you would just have to kind of do this top surface after it's been installed. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back cut the back of the tread. Now right now it's right side up and I'm taking the belt sander and I've got a slight tilt to it so that I am um, just cutting the bottom side of the tread and not touching the top at all. You do not want to make the mistake of touching the top because that will show a gap between the tread and your riser and that's what you're trying to get perfect right now. You're trying to back cut this just a little bit so the front edge hits first so there's no chance of it the, the not uh, going tight and leaving a gap. So this is an absolutely essential part of preparing the tread for installation. So I'm also going to take my grinder and catch the inside corners that I couldn't get in tight with the bell sander. You can also use um, a file. I should also mention that you don't want to be in a hurry during this part. If you're not really handy with a grinder, then use a chisel or use a file or use some sandpaper, but do not hit the top surface of that um, back of that tread or you'll regret it during installation. All right, I'm laid out a stick. I put an X on one end so I wouldn't forget that that's where I start. And uh, this is simply laying out the center line on the uh, stringer so I know exactly where to put my screws. All your screw holes need to be measured exactly because it does show up um, when you're all done if they're not lined up. So I'm going to take the square to make sure that the holes that I'm going to drill are right in line and evenly spaced. I'm going to pre-drill them after I'm done here. I'm going to take it over there to the saw horses and pre-drill them. And then I'm going to take the tool that makes the uh, countersinking hole that will hold up a, a bung that I'm going to fill a hole with here at the end. All right, here's a look at the countersinking tool. It actually is a tapered bit. 
um, which I don't really use in this instance because I'm not drilling it in place, but I am using the portion that makes the countersinking part to hold the plug. Okay, this tool right here, I'm using to deburr the back of the screw holes. Any trash that's left under there can get caught in my glue and hold up my tread. Also, this gives a little place, a little expansion for when you put that screw in there. If it pulls up any debris from the hole, it won't get caught in the tread. Okay, I'm marking where I'm going to drill the bottom of the riser, where I'm later going to put a screw from the riser into the back of the tread to make sure there's a nice tight fit. It's important to pre drill these. A little bit larger than your screw so that you uh, can make sure that it's going to slip and pull it tight and you want to pre-drill it so that you don't accidentally put a screw through the top of your tread <clears throat> okay we're finally ready to install the treads except for one more thing after we put them up here to set them in place we're going to need to see how much needs to be removed so they'll just perfectly slide past the skirt board on either side for a perfect fit. This is where it's really going to take a nice sharp pencil or you can even use a knife edge to make this mark. Take your time. This is where it all counts. I center it between the openings so I'm taking the same amount off each side and then in this case I'm going to use this straight edge to make sure that I uh, make a nice line that I can later cut to. By back cutting it, you've made it a lot easier to file that right down to your line for a perfect fit. All right, I'm just going to lightly sand the edges a little bit, make sure there's no burrs that would get hung up behind the tread. And this thing is ready to install or at least check and make sure it fits good. I don't want to apply the glue and then find out that I needed to take off a little bit more. So I'm just checking it. Looks like it's going to be a perfect fit. So I'm going to go ahead and get my tools. I'm going to need a couple of levels, some shims. I got my glue up there, my screws. Um, first thing I'm going to do is check this thing and make sure it is good and flat. And if I have to add any shims, go ahead and glue them in place now. You'll see I'm going to check that. It looks like it's a nice tight fit. Even my smallest shim won't fit underneath that. So I'm good to go. I'm also going to check it for level the other direction. And that's where I'll use that smaller level and it looks great okay I'm going to put some wood glue on the bottom of the riser that will help attach that to the back of the tread when I put those screws through it just a little extra I'm not sure this is really necessary but I like doing it I 
Okay, it's time to add the glue. Don't be stingy when it comes to the glue. Load plenty of it on. The only downside to too much glue is you'll notice when I install these treads, the glue will come up through the holes. That's why I put on two runs. I try to straddle the center hole, but it doesn't really help. The glue comes squeezing up through, this, through the hole where I'm going to put the screws, and so I have to deal with that. I also put a small amount of glue on the very front top of the lower riser. But you got to be really careful because it wants to ooze out, and then you've got a big problem. There, there it is, a nice tight fit. Not so much that you really have to pound it, but just enough to snug it right in there. I make sure that each edge is nice and tight. And the gap in the center, that won't bother me at all because that's what I'll be using these shims for to run that tight against the back of the tread. And then I'll put screws to the back of the riser into the tread to make it super tight. I'm pre drilling the holes because I'm using some three and a half inch wood screws and it could potentially break out the stringers. Also, it lets me know if I've got a good bite where sometimes the holes that are in my treads are lined up with the holes from the temporary treads and I don't want to go in the same hole. So I might have to use a longer screw in those instances. Okay, this is where I take the shims, and you see that gap right behind the riser? That's where I'm going to put the shim to drive the riser tight against the back of the tread. I'm going to glue the shim because I don't want it rattling out over the next 50 years. So I'm going to put it in there, I'm going to wrap it in with my hammer, and that's going to drive the riser tight against the back of the tread. I'm going to take these inch and a quarter screws and screw them through our pilot holes right into the back of the tread. That's going to finish the installation. All right, this is a bung cutting tool. It makes a plug, but it does it through the face of the wood so that you can line up the grain so they can practically disappear when you put them in place. Or you can put them um, right angle to the grain and then they show up a little more. They show up either way so I kind of like the subtlety of running it with the grain. You simply drill them, pop them out, and they're ready to install. After I'm done tapping all these in, I'll, take, I'll wipe off the excess glue just to make it dry a little easier. But it doesn't really matter, it all gets sanded off. And then I'm going to check up underneath and make sure there's no oozing glue. Now's the time to get it off. Being very careful not to smear it over your finished paint and to smear it on, the, on your uh, tread where it might cause a problem for your finishing. Take notice of the sheet metal that I'm using to guard against gouging this stair tread. The final thing to do after the belt sanding is to take the orbital sander with your 120 grit sandpaper and hit the top surface again. That will remove all the sanding marks from your belt sander. After that, it's ready for the finish.